what's going on guys welcome back to my personal channel welcome back to another review first thing i want to say before we start this video is if you guys haven't done so already please don't forget to like and subscribe to my personal channel i'd greatly appreciate it now it's crystal palace 2 chelsea 3 everyone can breathe everybody can relax a little bit because that was a very traumatic end to the game it would have been even more traumatic if we actually conceded off one of those last ditch efforts from scott dan and christian benteke it was a good performance in phases i will say that i don't want to try and have too much of a negative spin on this game because it was a tightly fought out game and it's that sort of grit and character that you do want to see in chelsea especially in the case of top four races or title races those are the sort of moments where you win games and those are just and these are the sort of tough games that you have to win in these sorts of races and we did that here today now we started the game very well uh chelsea got the first goal off olivier Giroud, who's got yet another goal and yet another involvement in the game today which is showcasing his excellence but the big talking point is obviously going to be william and gary cahill now gary cahill pulled up in the middle of the counter attack and william just went straight through the counter attack and cut it back to olivier Giroud for one nil now there was some complaints about it but as far as i'm concerned i really don't care i understand the case of if a player is injured you do want to kick the ball out of play to get them the assistant they need as soon as possible but you have to understand it from a positional management point of view that's the word i'm going to use for it because maybe in the case of if if one team's just passing the ball around and that doesn't really look like there's going to be a threat of an attack i get it. kick the ball out if a player's injured because no one's really doing anything if one team's in the middle of a counter-attack especially at this stage of the season and also in a position that well for themselves because of the injury, no one's really going to kick the ball out of play. That's the sort of goon or Arsenal mentality that leaves you in fifth or sixth place because you didn't take an opportunity that came across yourself. Yeah, it's a bit at peak for Cahill and I really hope it's not anything as bad as it looks because it does look very bad and no one wants to see a Chelsea legend fall to the ground like that. But in the situation and in, in where we need to be right now, especially with the fact that we need Arsenal to win in order for us to get third. And if we drop points in this game, it opens the door for Manchester United to overtake us into fourth place. I hold nothing against William for running through running through the ball. If anything, I looked at the replays. He didn't even notice Cahill had got, pot, had got away from him until he'd actually looked back to do the cutback to Olivier Giroud. So I don't get why people are complaining about it. But at 1-0, we look like we're comfortable. We look like we're dominating the game. And then Christian Pulisic comes out of nowhere and smashes it into the top left for 2-0. Now, Christian Pulisic, this guy is incredible. And I run out of expletives for this guy already at this age. The guy reminds me so much of Eden Hazard from his younger years where he was just a little bit more direct and more willing to shoot. The guy got the ball in space. He looked like he was going to cut inside, but the defender wasn't showing him inside. So he decides he's going to cut outside and smash it on his left-hand side. And it shows exactly how well Pulisic is on both feet. And throughout the entire game, his output was brilliant. As soon as he got the ball, he'd notice a little bit of space. And as soon as he beats one player, he's beating the next player. And he's beating the next player. And again, most of our attacking play came through him. Brilliant performance again from Christian Pulisic. But here's where we started to lose control of the game a little bit. Wilfred Zaha... Gets the ball in a decent amount of space. Billy Gilmore's lost his position because he's gone to try and intercept the ball off Van Arnholt. Opens up a bit of space for Wilfred Zaha, who smashes it into the roof of the net. Kepa's not doing anything about it. And no one's really going to complain about it because it was just an excellent hit from Wilfred Zaha. From that, point on, uh, from that moment on, we start to lose control of the midfield. Uh, you know, our midfield, we had Mount Gilmore and Barkley starting. It's not the most physical of midfields, especially compared to Crystal Palace. And Crystal Palace started to notice that and they were playing a lot more aggressive and they were starting to overrun us a little bit. Then comes Lampard with the brilliant substitution that he always has done, especially since the turn of the lockdown. Ruben Loftus-Cheek comes on, Tammy Abraham comes on and look at the two players that linked up for the goal minutes later. Ruben Loftus-Cheek gets the ball and, di and drives into space with brilliant pace as well and then you've got to give credit to the ball as well because he dinks it over the two defenders straight to Tammy Abraham who just has it one-on-one -on -one and has a great finish as soon as we finish celebrating that because if you saw on the watch along I was just getting gas I was like just being so happy with the style of play with the two guys that scored as well because it was a Lampard substitution Chelsea Academy and everything I'm just getting gas Benteke scored and it's 3-2 now for the second goal yeah, Christensen kind of got wrong-footed a little bit, but I don't want to blame Kurt Zuma for it. 
It does. It's not really a de for a defensive mistake. I think the most you can give is Christensen should have kept his feet and been a bit more stronger. But Christensen's been struggling with with stronger players, and it does need to be an area of his game that needs to improve. He looked like he'd improved in the City game, but it might have just been a really good game for him because he hasn't really produced the same performances since. Kurt Zuma got dragged into a two on one after Christensen lost his man, and at that point, Benteke was just in space. But you can't blame Kurt Zuma for that. Lampard then brings on Jorginho, who helps to slow down the tempo of the game a lot more. And his stats were excellent coming out of the game as well. I do want to just bring them out quickly. It's on my phone. Only played 10 minutes, 26 passes out of 33 completed. All of his long passes completed except for one. Won every ground jewel and every tackle. And you could see how comfortable the team was when Jorginho was on the pitch. Now, I get that Jorginho might be the player that has to be sacrificed. But... To still not play him, I don't really agree with that because I think right now, if Lampard wants to use him in this sort of role just to slow down games and they're already won, then that's the perfect role for him, especially if he's on his way out. But straight up just not putting him in the lineup, not really for me. You can see what his impact is on the team and it's just clear for everyone to see. We're a lot calmer on the pitch with Jorginho on it. And it, it wasn't just Jorginho being calm, it was the entire team. He was always in space. The long balls, like just distributing the play was brilliant. And the guy set the tempo and slowed it down, which is exactly what we needed. Crystal Palace then started to commit more players. We had the Scott Dan header that Kepa pushed into the post and it just came back off. It missed Maya and Benteke, who both would have put into an empty net, which is an example of the bit of luck that we need in this race. And then Benteke goes through one-on-one -on -one and Kurt Zuma comes out of nowhere and just nicks it straight off him with an amazing last-ditch tackle, which is a huge part of his game, those recovery tackles, which I remember in 15-16, he was really starting to build a name for himself for. So all in all, 3-2 Chelsea. We're going to go into the player ratings now. Um, Hold up, let me just get the lineup quickly. Uh, Kepper in goal. Uh, didn't think he had a bad performance. We do have to give credit to him for that big key save for the Scott Dan header. So I'm going to give him a six. But I don't really think he wouldn't have had anything to do for the first goal either. And bar that, I don't think his, his distribution was too questionable. So I'm going to give Kepper a six. As for Equator, uh, def actually no, As Equator, he won on the right side. So I think he had a much better performance. The left side was a lot more defensively solid. And I think going forward, his crosses weren't that bad, e bad either. So as for I'm going to give a six. Andreas Christensen, I think he really struggled today. Uh, just couldn't keep hold of Wilfred Zaha. And I think even with Benteke, he struggled a little bit. With, sorry, I think he struggled a little bit with him as well. So for Andreas Christensen, I'm going to give him a four. Yeah, I'm going to give him a four. Zuma, I'm going to give a seven to. I'm tempted to give him an 8 just for that last ditch challenge. But he was strong in the tackle. His recovery tackles were excellent. And his aerial ability for set pieces was so crucial to us. Like, I'll be real. Some of Williams' crosses weren't great today. But when they were good, they were mostly going to cut Zuma. And defensively, he was the guy getting rid of most of the headers as well. And his, his aerial ability is so needed. Especially for a club like ours, who has been so poor at corners this season. So Kurt Zuma gets a 7 from me. Reese James, I gets a five. Looked a bit better in the second half, but still looks a bit off the pace. He don't look like the same Reese James, so he just gets a five from me. Mason Mount gets a seven. Guy is brilliant. His awareness on the ball is close control. The guy drags two or three players in with him and then just gets the ball straight out into 20 yards of space afterwards. Unlucky to, not to get a goal as well, but it was a great performance from him. Billy Gilmore. I don't really blame him for the first goal. I understand him wanting to go for forwards towards Van Arnholt. And yeah, he might have left Zaha a bit exposed. But let's be real. It's a great hit from Wilfred Zaha anyways. I don't think Gilmore had a bad performance. I think he looked a lot more comfortable in that number six position. Struggled a little bit towards the second half when the team started to get a bit more physical. But he's always aggressive and he always gives it as much as he gets. So Billy Gilmore, I'll give a six. Ross Barkley as well. Uh, carried the ball pretty well. I don't think he was that frustrating today, to be honest, but I don't think I saw a lot from him this game, so I'm going to give him a five. Uh, Willian, uh, there were some more stats for this with Willian as well. Willian regained possession more times than any other player on the pitch today, which was 12 times, and his tracking back was just excellent today. I think the stat speaks for it for itself. Going forward, I thought he was good as well. Carried the ball, he was good at ball carrying, he carried the ball very well. It was the same thing that we brought on Loftus Cheek to try and do. 
because Palace were leaving spaces in behind when they tried to attack us and William was good at getting rid of those as well as being good at tracking back as well and his form has been excellent there's another stat here William has had a direct hand in a Chelsea goal in four consecutive Premier League games for the first time since the restart of the competition and no player has been involved in more goals William has been brilliant since the end since the return to lockdown I'm not sure about whether giving him a new contract. The guy's making a very big name for himself, but I'm low-key thinking we've seen this from William before. So I'm not really that sure. Um, moving on to Christian Pulisic, I'm going to give him an eight. He's my personal man of the match. As per usual, most of the attacks were going through Christian Pulisic. Most of our key plays in attack were going through Pulisic, and it was an amazing goal from him for the second goal as well. So I give him credit to that. Olivier Giroud. Good for the first goal and his physicality was needed as well. So I'm going to give him a six. Um, let's go to the substitutes now. Jorginho. Tempted to give him a seven. But I feel like I'd be pushing it a little bit if I did that. Yeah, that's my review. I'm giving him a seven anyway. I think the team was a lot slower. I think the play was a lot slower with him on the pitch. was exactly what we needed. We needed a bit of a calmness and a bit of a cool head there. And Jorginho gave that to us. So I'm giving him a seven. Loftus-Cheek came on and had the brilliant assist for the goal. For the third goal. And he was throwing his weight about as well. Which is exactly what we brought him on for. We brought him on for physicality. And all he brought on to the game was physicality. So he gets a 7 as well. Um, Who else? Hudson Adoy didn't play did he? No Hudson Adoy didn't play. Okay last one. Tammy Abraham. Tammy Abraham good finish for the, f for the third goal. Nearly conceded a f the third goal for the equaliser as well. With Crystal Palace because... Um, of a poor pass from Tammy Abraham. I think he struggled with the 50-50s as well. He wasn't winning a lot of balls in the air. Um, I just hope the goal's better for his confidence because I want to see his game start to improve. If Timo Werner coming into the team as well, you can tell it's had an impact on his confidence. So I want to try and see the Tammy Abraham of old. I'm going to give him a 6. I'm going to push it. Yeah, I'm going to give him a 6 only because he scored the third goal, but I'm very tempted to push it to a 5. Guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Let me know whether you agree or disagree with any of my ratings or any of the thoughts I've said in this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. I will see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the shells.